Hey guys, welcome back to Voice Bootcamp. This is Faisal Khan, Cisco Collaboration Instructor at Voice Bootcamp. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to configure uh, PCC to communicate with the call manager. Now we already know that the PCC already has integrated with call manager using the peripheral gateway or PG. And that part has been configured. So let's go take a look at it. So if I go back to my uh, inventory, you'll see that you will have a call manager publisher right there. And then you also have miscellaneous, you have a call manager subscriber. So both pop and sub are already into my uh, inventory. Now, however, call manager publisher is giving you an alert. So if you click on this alert, it will tell you that, that there are certain things that needs to be configured before you go ahead and do anything else. For example, you need to enable certain trace level according to PCCE, although it's a warning, not a mandatory. You must have a CVP SIP trunk from the call manager to the CVP server and make sure that you create at least two CVP separate SIP trunk, not one trunk with multiple IP address. So create two separate CVP SIP trunk and then use route list and route group to route traffic to those CVP. Now we only have one CVP server, so we can only use one. You also wanna make sure that call manager support, uh, allow the domain name to send traffic meaning well rather than configure uh, what they call is a fully qualified domain name in your call manager and the reason for that is in PCCE you send traffic not to an IP address but rather to a SIP server group and SIP server group use fully qualified domain name if you are someone who have experienced working with CVP before you probably have ex uh, remember that in CVP, you have to create some static route and that static route will usually point to, let's say, uh, a call manager or a visual vo a virtual voice vo browser. Well, now everything has to point to SIP group. So for that, you need to make sure that that uh, also allow so that the call manager accepts traffic for that particular domain. So this is something that we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it. So first thing you're going to do is go to call manager and make sure that your call manager is configured with a zip trunk. Okay, so first thing I'm going to verify is do I have a zip trunk to the call manager? Okay, so go device trunk at and we're gonna simply well i don't have one because i know i configured this system let's click next and we're gonna call this let's say cvp a even if you have cvp b feel free to add that particular trunk if you like uh, default uh, make sure you run you select this option run this server on all the server this way it will continue to run on publisher as well as subscriber if you have any calling source space requirement, feel free to select that. And here we're going to provide the IP address of our CVP server, 52, SIP security trunk profile and SIP profile. Okay, so you save. Now, once the trunk has been set, uh, set, uh, saved, make sure you do reset them. And uh, if you don't, what happens is the column manager does not initiate a signal to that particular IP address. So sometimes it does not go in service, basically. So we're going to make sure it is reset it. And uh, next step is I'm going to make sure that I have a rod group. We'll call this a CVP. And if you have a, a second, I'm going to add the CVP A. But if you have a CVPB, you can then add that as well into this list. That's how you achieve redundancy. Well, I would probably add a CVPB into CVPB route group. Okay. So I'm going to call this CVPA uh, RG CVPA. Now I will then create a route list, which is going to select RL CVP, and we're going to make sure. Uh, call manager's default and we're going to make sure CVPA is my first choice. I'm going to click on add route to the group. I'm going to add CVPA as my first choice. I'm not going to do any sort of digit manipulation at this moment. 
and basically make sure you run this on all nodes this is very important and then you save now if you have a CVP B route group please feel free to add that as a backup or redundance uh, option all right my route group is created next step is I must create some route pattern now question is what what pattern should I use okay for this what I would recommend you to do is first go to call manager and uh, sorry PCC uh, SPOG uh, interface from there you're gonna go to call settings and then you go to IVR settings oh, sorry not IVR settings my apology uh, routes uh, miscellaneous so when you're in the miscellaneous about uh, on your call call routing you go to main side and you'll see these are the label that you must configure and for the call manager it is using this particular label for CVP it is going to use this particular label so what I do need what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a route pattern in call manager with that 8881111 and I can only configure one in the entire system that is where the restriction for one particular site um, so I'm going to copy that and then you're going to go back to call manager you're going to add a route so that is a label that is going to be returned so I'm going to add this route and then I'm going to put the exclamation mark at the end which will contain the correlation ID very important okay now correlation ID usually could be one digit could be two digit could be three digit depending on how you have configured your system now I don't really care how many correlation digit it sends me because exclamation mark will cover as many number it comes in it might cause a little delay but we'll not worry. We're, gonna, we're not gonna worry about this at this moment here you'll see the route list called CVP and you're going to save that so this will establish a zip trunk between the call manager and a path between the call manager and the CVP which is very important all right so now once this is done and synchronization take place you can go back to your PCC's SPOG page and then you click on inventory again and at some point you should see this alert basically disappear uh, once the synchronizations take place you do get an alert on CVP so let's take a look at it it's telling you the CVP must have certain configurations as well configured basically the route so which I'll show you in the next page so right now what do you have you got a zip trunk configured from call manager to CVP well if you have both side A and side B you'll create two zip trunk one for side A one for side B you're gonna use a route group to point to the CVP trunk both A and B respectively and then you're going to create a route list pointing to the CVP route group and then finally create a label a route pattern matching the label that is coming in from the CVP or sorry my apology UCCE when a customer calls comes in now in some cases we we could use the same label for both call manager and CVP or you may for the sake of troubleshooting you may want to separate them so that you can understand where the call is coming in from but it is okay most likely uh, to use similar label all right so now that I have done uh, my call manager at this moment next step is how do I route calls from the call manager to the EPCC well for that I must create an application a route pattern CTI route sorry not route pattern CTI route point so what I'm going to do now usually you can send the call from call manager to PG to UCCE or you can send the call from call manager to CVP and CVP will send the calls to the UCCE in either way we're going to right now create a CTI route point in call manager uh, make sure it is not there okay so let's call this help desk I suppose done save add a line and we're gonna call this 2000 you know, help help us number save and save again and next step we're gonna do is gonna go to the application user this is the user account that PG is using to communicate with the call manager there is a specific application user called PG user which was created by the PCCE applica uh, is a deployment so I'm going to select that and I'm going to associate that particular help desk into this I'm not going to touch anything else 
and pretty much that's all I really need at this moment. All right, so now that I have done my call manager integrations with SIP trunk and everything, I have my CTI rod point, the customer is gonna dial 2000, that call will go to PCCE. Well, for in order for PCC, PCCE to receive that call, it must have equivalent number configured as a dial number. Well, before we configure a dial number in PCCE, what you wanna find out what type of call PG call manager PG is being identified. So if you go to peripheral gateway right there, you'll see that all your PGs are right there. So this is your call manager PG, this is your VRU PG, which is CVP, and this is for a media ring PG or MRPG. Right now we're concerned about the call manager. And if you look at the call manager PG, at the end is a routing type called internal voice. This is very important internal voice so what you're going to do now you're going to go back to call AECC call routing and I'm going to go to route settings and one of the, one of the things I'm going to do is create a dial number right there so it's equivalent of 2000 now when you create a dial number it's going to ask you for a call type which is very important so you click on call type first we create, we're going to create a call type called voice CT it's a voice call and I'm going to keep it everything default so now that call type has been created, I'm going to associate a dial number. And I'm gonna call this dial number 2000. I'm gonna call this uh, VBC help desk. It's gonna be for the main site. Routing type is external internal. This is the reason why I went to the peripheral gateway to find out what is the routing type for my call manager. Well, it's called internal. So I'm gonna select that. And everything else gonna default. Um, yeah, everything, uh, a call type. So call type, I'm gonna choose voice CT. And it's important that you select a call type because things are slightly different than old deployment. So save it. So now I have a phone number, 2000. Literally at this moment, if I dial the number, I should see call hit my PGG, PCCE. All right, so let's find out how to do that. So first, we're gonna make sure we have a phone. Okay, that's important, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to enable auto registration on my publisher. Okay, I'm gonna enable auto registration and I'm going to actually register a phone. So I have this software phone that I use and I'm gonna change the IP address of call manager. And I can use the same MAC address, it's fine. Okay, so I got two phone that, are, that should be able to register now. If I go to phone one, which is basically an IP blue software phone that we use that allows you to have eight phone in a, a particular uh, PC. It may take a little while for the phone to go through a registration process now, in order for this registration to be successful, please make sure the firewall on this PC is, is either disabled or allowed for this application to uh, register. So, for 2001 has been registered, and if I go to the device, you'll see the phone is right there. What I wanna do, because this is a auto registration phone, there is something that is a little annoying, this e um, idle URL, I wanna change that. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. And now I have my, this phone should be able to call. Now while it makes a call, I wanna do, be, I wanna be able to test it, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna to go to my admin server and in administration tools, you have something called uh, router log viewer. So you're gonna open that and you're going to click on connect. Obviously there's nothing in there. Uh, I'm going to just dial 2000. Now, before I do that, let's take a look at one thing. Let's go to device, CTI rod point. You see, this number 2000 is registered with my peripheral gateway. See, that's 55, that is the IP address of my PG, and it is registered by the PG to the call manager. 
So that means every time I dial 2000, a signal will be hitting to the PG. PG will send it to the router and a logger, which will then look into the configuration that I've done. Well, let's make the dial. So when I say dial 2000, now let me tell you, the call will fail, which is okay. So you're gonna get a fast busy any momentarily. There we go. And I wanna see if anything shows up in the log viewer. So when you connect to the log viewer, click on connect, and you'll see that it tells you that it is unable to schedule a script for the dial number 2000. Okay, so the call failed, which is not a good thing, I get that. But, at least we know the call is coming to PCCE, right? So now, we are sure that integration between the call manager and the PCCE is working fine. The dial numbers are recognized, though it's not working, but it is recognized because you can see here 2000, and it is match mapping to voice CT, but I don't have a script, which is perfectly fine. So that is how you integrate the PCCE with the call manager and make sure there is a trigger to dial the number in. All right, so that's it for this particular lab. And the next lab, I'll show you how to customize uh, the integration with the CVP and make a call.